Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of Butt Crack Cycles, and it is September now, which means that even though here in South Carolina it's probably going to be like 80 degrees for the next month or so, in many parts of the country, and hopefully soon here as well, it's going to be fall. And I thought I might do something um, a little bit different for this episode. I've got some motorcycles I'm working on, but didn't have enough ready to send out a full episode. And I thought we might just talk about something that everybody needs on their motorcycle, regardless of what kind of bike you ride, and that is gear. Let's talk a little bit about some of what I wear in the fall. All of this is kind of budget oriented, like probably many of you, I don't have a huge budget. Um, I'm kind of poor. <laughs> So I tried to pick stuff that was useful and could get me through multiple seasons and last a long time without breaking the bank. Finally, none of this is sponsored. Nobody has sent me any of this stuff. None of this is free. I have paid for all of this out of my pocket. These are all objects that I have purchased on my own after doing research and reading reviews. And um, all of this stuff is stuff that I've been riding with for quite a while and I like, so I wouldn't suggest something that I don't actually use and I don't actually like. All right, so let's do some movie magic and put on the first piece of clothing. One, two, three, did it work? Did I do a good transition? I don't know what I'm doing. Um, the first thing is this jacket. This is a Built Blaze 2 jacket. This jacket normally sells for 120 bucks, which is what I paid for it. And I've had this for about two years. Right now though, I was looking up prices online before I started making this video so I could just be like, this is how much this stuff currently sells for. I see this jacket right now for sale for 60 bucks on several places. I think like Revzilla, uh, J&P Cycles, um, there was one other one pretty big one maybe it was cycle gear anyways if you just type in built blaze 2 jacket you can find this jacket it's 60 bucks right now i paid 120 and even at 120 i still think it was a good deal um it fits a little bit bit slim and tight which is fine for me i kind of like that uh for measurements purposes i'm like five six five seven i weigh about 160 pounds right now i'm a little overweight um from what i usually like to be but even still, with uh, all that being said, this is still a pretty good fit for me if you like your stuff a little looser size up, I would say. It is mesh throughout most of the you know, chest and everything, which means that this is a really breathable jacket. This is really great for early fall. Um, honestly, all the way through September and up until October here in South Carolina, this would be something I would wear. All of the panels like the that are not mesh are 600D, so these are pretty thick. This jacket also comes with CE level one armor in the shoulders and the um, elbows. I did that backwards. This is my shoulder and this is my elbow. You know what I'm talking about though. So that's nice if you're worried about safety and taking a slide, you've got some kind of padding and um, some nice pretty thick fabric over top of the armor. You can obviously upgrade these to level two armor. I think it's kind of a waste on a jacket like this since your chest and your core and your back is really uh, just not terribly protected. The back has some padding right through the, that center section of it, but that is not armor. It's not CE rated armor. I guess it's better than nothing, but I really like this jacket for when it's not too cold outside. Um, it's breathable so the wind can kind of run through you a little bit, which is why I wouldn't wear this later into the season, but for early fall, this is a nice jacket. And if you can pick it up right now for 60 bucks, I mean, yeah, definitely. Good choice. On to the next one. Okay, this is outfit number two. I feel like I'm in a fashion show. This is actually a Harley Davidson jacket. And I don't normally buy Harley Davidson branded products. I often feel like you can get a, an equivalent product of the same quality for way less price somewhere else. Or for the same price, you can get a much nicer product again somewhere else. I think a lot of Harley products are way overpriced and they just slap their branding and their badge on it and then sell it for three times what it's worth. However, I don't think this was a bad deal. Um, Harley calls this their three-in-one denim vest jacket combo, something like that. I bought this, I think about a year and a half ago and I paid like 170 bucks for it. It's out of production now. I can still find it online in some places, still around that like 150, 170 range. 
I think when this was brand new, it was like 265 or 270. That was way too much, I think. The part number on it is 98175-17VM. I'll put that up. I had my little cheat sheet taped to my tripod. That might make it easier to find this combo if you're looking for it. Harley is a little bit misleading when they call this a three in one because it's only two pieces of clothing. It's the vest and the jacket, but they're calling it three in one because you can wear it three different ways. So way number one is how I'm wearing it right now. Jacket, which is a hoodie with the vest over top. Um, then way number two is just the hoodie. I'll wear just this hoodie um, later on in the fall when that built jacket gets too cold for me. This is what I'll throw on. And then putting that denim vest over top of it just gives you another layer of wind resistance. This jacket is super duper warm. I'm like sweating bullets in this thing right now. It's very thick and very heavy. It does not come with armor in it, but it does have hidden armor pockets inside the jacket. So if you wanted to do something like buy a, you know, cheap set of CE1 plates to put into this jacket, you can do it. This jacket is also supposed to be windproof. And I have to say in my experience so far, I have found that to be true. For just that like 50 to 60 nice fall weather at regular cruising speeds, this will keep the wind off of you. Finally, this hoodie does have an, uh, aramid fiber lining in it. Harley doesn't say if it's Kevlar or what, but it is some sort of skid resistance, abrasion proof um, lining inside of it. And that's part of why this jacket is so heavy. The third way that you can wear this is just with the vest. So let's do a, another quick wardrobe change and we'll talk about that. Okay, so here it is with just the vest. And I'll be honest, I didn't think I was gonna wear it like this like ever. Um, I don't know, I kind of thought maybe like having the vest on was just too like, hell yeah, brother, for me. That's not really where I fit in in Harley land, but actually this has become one of my most worn um, pieces during the fall and even in the spring. I really like this the way I'm wearing it right now with a flannel shirt underneath. This is great for days when like, you know, it's chilly. It's, it's a little chillier than just the flannel shirt would get you by with. So you throw on the vest and you get that extra coverage on your core, on your center of mass where it like really matters and just let your arms be a little bit colder, which for me works out great. I'm not overheated. Um, I wear this a lot and this is kind of a slimmer fit. Um, I think you might've figured that out. I tend to prefer that. Uh, I don't really like having a lot of loose clothing flapping around in the wind on my bike. So a little bit trimmer of a fit than you might have on some other vests, but this actually is one of my most worn pieces of motorcycle gear. Strangely, I did not think I would like this, and here we are, I wear this a lot. Next, I wanna talk about gloves. This is the Alpine Star Air V2 gloves. These are about 70 bucks right now. Um, these are pretty nice glove for the money. You've got the reinforcement on the knuckles. Pretty nice, good palm section here. Uh, I used to wear these a lot more than I do. I pretty much only break these out now when it starts to get a little cooler. They are mesh through the fingertips, so you've got some nice airflow that goes through them. Um, I like these gloves. I've been wearing them for a couple of years, and they've held up really well. I will normally ride in these once it starts getting, you know, down into like the 50s or 60s or so. Like, you know late September through early October here. And then as October progresses into November is when I will change up to a heavier pair of gloves. But this is a pretty nice set of gloves made by a reputable, well-known um, company. I wear a size medium. I don't have really huge hands. I follow the sizing guidelines for these and uh, it worked out perfectly for me. So if you just read their instructions and follow it, you will do good. These are also, as you see right here, you probably can't see that. These are CE certification European. I think these are just CE one. They have to be because they're not a gauntlet glove. So pretty safe too. And lastly, we're gonna talk about helmets. This is a Torque T50 helmet. I think these helmets are about 110 bucks. They're not really that expensive. You can get them in all sorts of cool colors. 
Um, they are only DOT rated, so they may not be the absolute safest helmet on the market. Obviously, they are just a three-quarter style, like, retro helmet. I have found this helmet to be pretty comfortable. I wear this more than my other helmet, which I will show you in a little bit. Um, but, yeah, you get more protection than you do with just a little half helmet. Here in South Carolina, we do not have a helmet law, so many people don't wear helmets at all. And a lot of my riding buddies who do wear helmets only put them on when we cross the border to North Carolina, since I live right on the border. And North Carolina does have helmet laws, but a lot of those guys will ride with just a novelty, not DOT approved helmet. So if you want something that's pretty cheap and looks pretty cool still, an old school vintage look, for 110 bucks, this does pretty good. It's not like a Joe King or some of those other fancier small batch uh, helmet makers who make vintage style three quarter helmets like this, but those helmets are also like three and four hundred dollars a piece. Um, maybe one day I will get one. This is DOT approved at least, so I put my noggin in it a lot. And when it gets too cold to wear the three quarter helmet, I break out this. This is an LS2 Street Fighter helmet. These helmets right now sell for around $170. I really like this helmet. It's pretty lightweight. Um, it's fairly comfortable. It's not terribly hot, though I do not really wear this very much anymore in the summer. I'll wear the three-quarter one because this one is too hot for me in the summer. In the winter time and in the fall, though, this is definitely the move. Full face is the way to go if you want to extend your riding season into the cooler months. This helmet has vents for the chin and for your head flip-up visor, obviously. Uh, I believe that you can change the cheek pads in one of these, too. I haven't had any need to. Um, there are some accessories you can get for these. I have my GoPro chin mount on the bottom here on the chin for making videos with, and a pro liner in the bottom. Which brings me to something about this helmet. It is a little bit noisy for a full-face helmet. It's not terrible. It's certainly a lot quieter than riding with an open-face helmet, but compared to, you know, four and five hundred dollar helmets this is quieter this is not as quiet um this helmet is not only dot rated it is also snell 2020 approved if you don't know what that is snell is an independent testing facility that tests helmets and their test um, requirements are far more stringent and far more demanding than what dot requirements are so if you're worried about having the most amount of safety in a helmet definitely snell or one of the like european certifications is probably what you're looking for over just a dot approved helmet it's part of why i bought this one it's a very safe helmet for not a lot of money all right so that's it for this episode this was uh, kind of fun to make honestly I hope that you all enjoyed it. If you were on the hunt for some fall weather gear, maybe you found something that caught your eye. Like I said, this is all stuff that I've been using for the last couple of years and it's done well for me. And I'm at a point where I feel happy with what I've got and I don't feel like I have to go run out and buy something else. But if you're on the hunt for something, maybe I could help steer you in the right direction. Uh, anyways, that's it. Go enjoy that wonderful fall weather. This is one of my favorite times of year to ride. You can just ride like all day. Anyways, uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time.